a KQED HD production. Every living organism, great and small, is made of cells. They grow and assemble into tissues specialized to carry out vital tasks, such as pumping blood. For centuries, scientists have invented tools to shed light on the hidden mysteries of the cell. And now, Carolyn Larabel is adding a new dimension to our understanding of this biological building block. I've always been a visual person. I love to look at things. And here we are going to look at cells that you cannot see with the naked eye. They're one-tenth the diameter of the average human hair. But there's a whole universe inside of that cell. Like tiny factories, each cell has key parts to help it run. The nucleus is the main organizing center of the cell. It contains all of the genes that regulate the cell. So it has the basic blueprint of how that cell is supposed to function. Sometimes, as a result of diseases like cancer or malaria, that genetic blueprint can go haywire. So seeing changes inside cells can help identify an illness and possibly cure it. We're looking at B cells, an immune cell in the light microscope. Light microscope is a very simple system, been around for centuries. Light comes in through here. The condenser focuses the light onto the specimen that's sitting right here and the objective lens magnifies the image and we store the images on this CCD camera so we can see it right here on the screen. While a light microscope can allow scientists to see living cells, it has limited resolution. An electron microscope uses electrons, not light, for better magnification of cells. The electrons give you better resolution because it's a much shorter wavelength, so you get about a thousand times better resolution than you would with a light microscope. The limitation of it is that it has very limited penetration power, so this material that you're looking at has to be very thin. Since a whole cell would be too thick to image, it is typically cut into thin slices and then stained with heavy metals to boost the contrast. Still, only a fraction of the stained cell can be seen at a time. One of the big black boxes that remains in cell biology is the organization of the nucleus. It's been difficult to address with electron microscopy because you do have to stain it, and it's not clear what structures you're really seeing. Until now, that is. Lara Bell and her team at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory are powering up a new microscope that enables them to journey deep into cells like never before. Physicist Mark Legro spent three years building the world's first microscope, which uses X-rays to produce a fuller, truer picture of a cell. And with it, an exciting new chapter in our understanding of biology. The really cool thing about this X-ray microscope is that it enables you to see the full internal structure in three dimensions. The preparation is just simply freezing it. You don't have to stain it, and you get wonderful high information content without having to do any other preparation. We use x-rays for imaging because they have a shorter wavelength than visible light. And because their wavelengths are shorter than visible light rays, x-rays illuminate more detail in a smaller area of the cell. And this means that you can see much, much smaller features inside the cell than you can using a light microscopy. This 15-foot-long microscope, built from scratch, also emits a special kind of X-ray. When you get an X-ray in a doctor's office, they have a very, very short wavelength and a, and a high energy, so you can look through a whole body and see bones and skeletons and what have you. Now, we're looking at a cell which is thousands and thousands of times smaller than, than a whole body. So it takes a massive $100 million facility to create x-rays bright enough to illuminate cells. We're at the Advanced Light Source Synchrotron in Berkeley, California. And this one happens to be the brightest source of low energy x-rays in the world. So the synchrotron consists of a large circular ring in which electrons are stored and, and accelerated to very high energy. And as the electrons go whizzing around the storage ring, they're deflected and bent by magnets. And every time they're bent, they emit x-rays. 
The x-rays are then shuttled along a beam line directly into the microscope. A tiny sample of cells is placed under ultra-thin lenses. Images are generated by a camera, which detects how x-rays are absorbed by the carbon and nitrogen in cells. We might take 360 projection images all at a one degree angle, so that's the whole way around of the cell, put it into a computer, and then somewhere between five and 10 minutes later, we can have a full three-dimensional reconstruction of what the internal structure of the cell looks like. What can take weeks to a month to image a cell in the electron microscope, we can now do in a matter of minutes. And the first time I looked at the nucleus in the native state and watched all the different organization of those genes in that nucleus, I'm not joking, I sat and stared at it for hours. This rapid technique is similar to a medical CAT scan, but here the scanning is of cells, not organs. We have powerful computer programs that allow us to take each one of these individual two-dimensional slices through the cell and reconstruct the 3D volume of each structure in the cell. So what you see here are the tubular mitochondria. Mitochondria make energy for the cell. Traditional electron microscopes have revealed only a two-dimensional view of them. I had no idea that my mitochondria could be that long and interconnected in the cell. I had no idea they wrapped around the nucleus as much as they do. We're getting new information about the nucleus. That means we may have to rewrite textbooks on how the nucleus is organized. This amazing 3D window into the cell also opens exciting opportunities to put these new insights to practical use. We know that in cancer, certain genes that should have been turned off have been turned on inappropriately. When those genes are turned back on, the nucleus gets larger. Our hope is that we can find some of the changes that occur in the nucleus that are responsible for it becoming larger earlier because we're getting that three-dimensional view of the cell. The X-ray microscope is also revealing changes within cells due to malaria, a parasitic infection that kills more than a million people a year. What you can see here is the parasite inside of the red blood cell. You see how it's made this large bulge. The parasite's getting larger, reproducing, making a number of small parasites. We've looked at 600 malaria-infected red blood cells, and we now have a much better understanding of how this infectious process occurs. Exploring the world of the cell in 3D instead of a flat, dried section of it also holds value for Blake Simmons, a scientist at the Joint Bioenergy Institute, a partnership between the University of California and the Department of Energy. Biofuels are the fuel of the future. Uh, they are derived from renewable sources unlike oil and gas. At the Joint Bioenergy Institute, we're really focused on building biofuels from the conversion of switchgrass, miscanthus, pine, and corn stover. These non-food plants are converted to fuel by fermenting the sugars inside of them into a cleaner alternative to oil. But making biofuels is no easy feat. Plants are not designed to fall apart at the whim of humanity. They are designed to exist in nature and be very robust and very hard to break down. So the real trick here is how can we get access to those sugars because the sugars are the driving force for our biofuel production. Chemical solvents help free up the sugars bound by the rigid cell walls of plants like switchgrass. And now the scientists can enlist the X-ray microscope to reveal the structural effects of this chemical treatment. Here you've got the intact cell walls of switchgrass before any treatment has occurred and then the broken down plant material that we can efficiently extract the sugars from and then produce biofuels. And using this X-ray microscope for the first time we can really get a three-dimensional objective of how the plants are being broken down in these different environments. We can very quickly identify the strongest links or the weakest links in the plant cell wall and then engineer the plants so that they will be even more efficient at breaking down in these complex environments. As powerful as this tool is, it can't capture real-time movement or changes in cells. The main limitation of the X-ray microscope is that you can't look at dynamics. Those cells are frozen and that it's required to hold all of the structures inside of the cell perfectly still as you're imaging. Even so, this mighty microscope is illuminating a 
brighter, larger vision of the tiniest unit of life, and with it, a clearer path for inspiration and discovery. What I would like to see is that the X-ray microscope would become a universal tool in many labs. I think it has a tremendous potential for answering basic biology questions, diagnostics, and perhaps solving the energy problem.